All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to talk about solving linear inequalities. So in this section, you're going to learn how to graph inequalities on a number line, how to write sets of numbers in interval notation, and how to use equality properties with inequalities to solve equations. So a linear inequality is just a mathematic, mathematical statement containing some type of inequality symbol. So for example, something like x is less than or equal to 5. Solutions to inequalities are represented by sets of numbers, right? because there are many, many numbers that are less than or equal to 5. We couldn't just write one answer. Right? In fact, there's an infinite number of numbers that are less than or equal to 5. So we need a good way of writing the answers to these problems where we don't have to write out every single number. So first we're going to start by talking about just graphing inequalities on a number line. To graph an inequality on a number line, start with the given number, then shade the number line to include all the numbers that represent solutions. So let's try this. And let's talk about one other thing. When we write these equations on a number line, if you use a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we're going to use brackets less than or greater than, you're going to use parentheses. And so we want all the numbers that are less than or equal to 5. Well, here's 5. And because we can be equal to 5, we're going to use a bracket. And we want all the numbers that are less than or equal to 5. So all the numbers that are less than 5, well, that's everything in this direction. And so we have a bracket at 5, because it can be equal to 5, and everything less than 5 is shaded. Let's try another one. Here we want to graph x is greater than negative 3. Well, here's negative 3. Because we're just talking about greater than and not greater than or equal to, we're going to use a parentheses. And then we want all the numbers that are greater than negative 3. And so that's everything to the right of the number line. So whenever we solve inequalities, we need a good way to write the answer. And that, that way is known as interval notation. This is basically a shorthand method compared to graphing on a number line. So when we're looking at a number line, the arrows on each end of the number line represent negative infinity and positive infinity. So these sets of numbers will usually go on forever in one direction or the other. And so infinities will be part of the answer. Now remember to use brackets if it can be equal to that number and parentheses if it, if it can't. If it's not equal to that number, you would use a parenthesis. Okay, because you can never be equal to infinity, both positive and negative infinity will always get a parenthesis. So let's start by graphing this inequality on a number line, and then we're going to write the answer in interval notation. So we have x is less than negative 2. Well, here's negative 2. And because it's just less than, we're going to get a parenthesis and everything less than negative 2. Now, once you've graphed this on a number line, writing the in interval notation is not so bad. The left-hand arrow represents negative infinity. The right-hand arrow represents positive infinity. When you write an interval notation, always start from the leftmost number which in this case is negative infinity, and then comma to the rightmost number, which in this case is negative 2. And so infinity always gets a parenthesis. And because we're less than, negative 2 will get a parenthesis. And so in interval notation, this would be our answer. What that is telling us is that every number between negative infinity and negative 2 is a solution to this inequality. 
which you should hopefully be able to see is every number less than negative 2. So now let's try a similar problem, except we're going to do x is greater than or equal to 6. And so here's 6. And we know it's greater than or equal to, so we get a bracket. And then everything greater than 6. Well, remember these arrows? That's minus infinity. This arrow over here is positive infinity. And we write this in interval notation. We want to start from the leftmost number and go to the rightmost number. And so in this case, the leftmost number is 6, and the rightmost number is positive infinity. Now, with 6, we'll get a bracket because it can be equal to 6. But infinity always gets a parenthesis. And so this is our answer in interval not notation. It's perfectly okay if you have one bracket on one side and a parenthesis on the other. Just make sure that whatever you do, infinity always gets a parenthesis. You can never be equal to infinity. So solving a linear inequality is nearly the same as solving a linear equation. The only big difference is that if you divide or multiply by a negative number, the inequality sign flips. It's going to turn around. All the other steps are the same. And the only big difference at the end is that answers are, are either graphed on a number line or written in interval notation. Because in an inequality, you're going to have a bunch of numbers as an answer, as opposed to just one single number. So let's practice this. We're going to solve this inequality, and then we're going to write the answer in interval notation. And as you can see, I have this number line down here. It's just going to help us to work through it. And so we have x plus 7 is greater than 8. Now we can treat this almost like it were x plus 7 is equal to 8. The steps will be the same. And so if we had x plus 7 is equal to 8, we would subtract 7 from both sides. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to subtract 7 from both sides. And 7 minus 7 is just 0. And we get x is greater than 8 minus 7 is 1. So x is greater than 1 is our solution, but we want to write it in interval notation. And so here's 1 down at the bottom. We can put a bracket, I'm sorry, we can put a parenthesis because it can't be equal to 1, it's got to be greater than 1. And all the numbers greater than 1. And then if we wanted to write this in interval notation from the left to the right, it would be positive 1 to positive infinity. And they both get parentheses. Both x is greater than 1, and this interval here, 1 to infinity, represent the same numbers. x is greater than 1 is in what's known as set notation, or some form of set notation. And this one is an interval notation. But if we were to write out a huge list of all these numbers that satisfied x is greater than 1, both of these things would give you the same list. They're the same thing. They're just written in two different ways. All right, so once again, we want to try to solve this equation. And then we're going to write the answer in interval notation. We have negative 6x plus 2 greater than or equal to 2 times 5 minus x. We can distribute the 2 on the right-hand side so that we get negative 6x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 10 minus 2x. Now we want to move the x's to one side and the numbers to the other. And so we're going to add 2x to both sides. And negative 2x plus 2x will give you 0. Negative 6x plus 2x gives you negative 4x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 10. We can now subtract 2 from both sides. And we get negative 4x is greater than or equal to 8. 
And here's where a linear inequality and a linear equation are different. Because now we have to divide by negative 4. And when you divide by a negative in an inequality, the inequality symbol flips. And so now we have negative 4 divided by negative 4 is just 1x, but now it's less than or equal to 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. And so we have x is less than or equal to negative 2. Remember, if you divide by a negative, the inequality sign flips. Now, negative 2 is down here on the number line. And we're going to get a bracket and everything less than negative 2. And so if we wanted to write this in interval notation, starting from left to right, we would get minus infinity with a parentheses to negative 2 with a bracket. And so finally, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to graph an inequality on a number line, you should be able to write an inequality in interval notation, and you should be able to solve a linear inequality and write the answer in interval notation.